renunciation and embracing and being this or that doesn't come into question anymore. It's about what you're doing in this moment. And if you go fearlessly, but you have to be fearless. Fearless. No? Then life will suddenly design its path for you. If you just do that in every moment, after a while life will take you into paths that are meant to be yours. I'll take you after him, okay? and then you, okay. Namaste. Namaskar. Tell me uh, your name. Sorry. Your name. Chaitanya. Chaitanya, uh -huh. yes. Probably there are two theories, or you can say two options. One is renunciation, yes. in which a human being leaves everything. I am an ardent follower of Swami Vivekananda. He said, service to humanity, or service to mankind is service to God. We have examples in renunciation, like Mirabai, Buddha, Kabir, etc. And we have examples in th this, this land also. We mm -hmm. have Abraham Lincoln, we study Gandhiji, where they devoted their whole life for the upliftment of the downtrodden or mm -hmm. humankind. So my question is, which way, renunciation or working towards others, serving society, is mm -hmm. more prudent to achieve the ultimate Almighty. The ultimate Almighty that you speak about is Atman. You can call it God, you can call it Atman, you can call it Self. No? That ultimate Almighty which you're trying to reach is actually present within you as the Antar Atman, the Atman. So, when you actually learn to know if the Atman is impulsing an action or it's coming from ahankar, ego. When you start to discern between the two, what happens is, and you go with the, the Antar Atman and its action, what happens then is that everything you do leads you more and more to the Almighty, to the Atman. Whether it is service to humanity, whether it is renunciating certain aspects, whether it is complete renunciation, complete service to humanity, whatever action comes from this body of yours is as a servant of the truth. So it might take you in this direction, it might take you in that direction, it might take you into Adhyatmik Seva, it might take you into Samaj Seva, spiritual seva, social seva, it might take you into doing nothing. Maybe the soul tells you to do nothing. So, the important thing is not to make those big decisions about all those great paths to take, rather a simple thing in the here and the now, in samarpan, you know samarpan? Yeah. Just to be, always bring yourself to this moment, you know, this moment, and to feel the impulse of the soul and to distinguish is this ahankar that is making me do this or is it antar atman and so if you just do that in every moment after a while life will take you into paths that are meant to be yours whether it's a renunciate or it's a uh, samaj sevak or an adhyatmik sevak or none of those things whether it's being a family father or a sadhu, but it is this which is the master, the Antar Guru is your master. And you have to learn to tune into the Antar Guru to get that impulse, because in every moment the ego is trying to, the ahankar is trying to push its way through. Beta tum ye karo, tum wo karo, ye acha hai, ye theek hai, ye theek nahi hai, you know? This is okay, that is okay, this is not okay, this is good, don't do this, this is wrong, this is right. The impulse of the soul is not like that, it's just yes, no, do, don't do, do, don't do. It's impulsing your body to do or not to do. And when you were a little child, you didn't think so much, you just did. 
That's the state to come into by feeling the Antaratman. You understand what I'm saying? It's very beautiful because it takes away this pressure of being kya karu, shall I be Swami Vivekananda, shall I be Mirabai? You don't have to be anything, you just have to be a servant of this truth. In every moment, it's not tomorrow or yesterday, it's this moment, this moment, again this moment, this moment, again this moment, again this moment. So renunciation and embracing and being this or that doesn't come into question anymore. It's about what you're doing in this moment. And if you go fearlessly, but you have to be fearless. Fearless. No? Then life will suddenly design its path for you. It's in this moment that you design what has to be the purpose of this living, this life. One more question yes. related to my professional life. I am a law student uh, in final year of my law. Uh, we go to courts. Uh, question is related to ethical dilemma. I know I am serving a wrong side, but to serve my profession, to earn my bread or food, I have to do it. But I knew that my, con my conscience is telling me, you are on the wrong side. So, in such situations, as my career is about to begin of advocacy, how should I cope up or choose, wise, choose wisely? So every profession has its own dharma. The dharma of a lawyer is to actually fight the case for the client. Yes. That's your dharma at the time of choosing the client is where you can make the choice. Once you've taken up the client, your dharma is to fight for, the, fight for, the. for that client to win. So before you choose the client, you can ask. You have an antaratman, it answers. Yes. It says yes or no. You can quiet yourself down. Anyone can do it. Bring yourself to this moment and ask. Once you take up that client, after that it is your dharma to Fight for him. Fight till you win. Yes. Like Krishna said to Arjuna. No, fine, God wins. Isn't it beautiful? Yes, it is. <laughs> and it's very simple. Yes, it is. And also remember the Annadata, the one that feeds you, the source of your nourishment has to be has to be acknowledged in every moment of your very shady career as a lawyer. It's not shady anymore. Thank you. Um, just the one girl behind and then after her you can come. Joachim, right, is your name? Joachim. <laughs>